Hello, all of you vain, gloriously wonderful people. In the nearly seven years that I have been uploading videos to YouTube, I usually bring you a holiday themed video that was created in a game. We've had Drunken Christmas and Christmas Rampage in GTA, and we've had Project Cheer in Astroneer. But this year, I wanted to do something a bit different, something more personal. Christmas can be a magical time, especially for younger children. I know for me, as a young kid, I looked forward to Christmas all year long. On the day after Thanksgiving, I'd start pestering my mom to begin putting up our Christmas decorations. And I loved decorating for Christmas. I always wanted to help put the lights on the tree and select which ornaments went where and hang the tinsel and beads from the branches. Granted, I was still just a little guy, so the tree didn't actually look all that good, but I still loved doing it. But the one thing that I most looked forward to every year was our annual visit to a local department store that just happened to have its corporate office and high-rise building in a nearby city. On the ground floor of that high-rise, they had their flagship store. At Christmas, they went all out. They decorated the entire surrounding block of buildings in one cohesive theme. There wasn't a wall, a window, a signpost, or even a mailbox that wasn't decorated. As you begin walking down the courtyard that led to the entrance of their flagship store, each of their store windows was filled with the best Christmas displays. They had lights, and really cool backdrops and really mind-blowing little animated figurines. I would stop and stare in delight, all the while my mom and older sister were begging me to move along because it was cold outside and they were freezing. But I never minded the cold. The joy of the entire scene was enough to keep me warm inside. Once my mom finally managed to get me in the store, the magic kept going. Like the exterior, the interior was filled to the brim with holiday decorations and the air was filled with the smells of fresh baked cookies in their cafe and Christmas carols played gently in the background. Near the entrance, they had set up a special kids only store. No grown-ups allowed. Once I would step through that door, I was in a kid-sized winter wonderland. They had a few staff members dressed up as elves, or Santa's helpers as they called themselves, ready to help the boys and girls pick out gifts for their family members. Not only was everything kid-sized, but the prices were kid-friendly as well. The small amount of money I earned was more than enough to buy nice gifts for my family. I could get a bottle of my mom's favorite perfume for $2. I could get a new Barbie for my older sister for just a buck, and that new fishing hat for my dad, just two dollars. I have no idea how they have the prices so cheap. Maybe my mom was just paying the difference outside the kids only store, or maybe they just sold stuff at a loss as a great marketing tool to get entire families to come into their store. I have no idea and didn't care because it made Christmas even more magical that there was a store made just for little kids where we could buy nice gifts. And when we had made our selections and paid up the kids size cash registers, the Santa's helpers would even gift wrap everything and help us fill out cards for each present. Once my sister and I rejoined our mom back out in the department store, she'd take us to the floor with the toys. Now, this was not just some average toy aisle. No, nearly every single toy that was being sold was also out of the packaging and ready to be played with. I could have spent all day in there setting up Hot Wheel tracks or taking out Cobra Command with G.I. Joes. My mom would patiently wait as we would play, making mental notes of the things that we seemed to like the most. The only part that I didn't really like came next, and that was trying on clothes. Mom would move us on to the kids' clothing section, picking out several outfits for us to try on. To this day, I hate trying on clothes, but five-year-old me? Well, I really put up a fight about it. My mom would usually just resort with bribing me to the chance to pick out a new toy that I could take home that day just to get me to cooperate. But the best part, the part that I most looked forward to, came next. 
on his own dedicated floor, surrounded by props that made a very convincing North Pole scene, we got to go see Santa. And let me tell you, I loved Santa. I mean, what kid in their right mind doesn't like some chubby dude who hangs out with magical reindeer and brings you presents? The line to sit on Santa's lap was always so long, but I was always patient because I wanted to make sure that Santa saw me being good so that I'd end up on the nice list and get the best toys for Christmas. And that brings me with one special Christmas memory that I want to share with you today. I was six or seven years old and I had become a bit obsessed with autographs of characters from movies after having received a birthday card from C-3PO from Star Wars a couple of months earlier. So in addition to all of the toys on my list for Santa, I had one special thing in mind. I wanted the paw print from Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer. You see, Rudolph was my favorite character from Christmas. Not only was he an outsider who became the hero on Foggy Christmas Eve, but he even had his own stop motion animation Christmas specials on TV. Take that comment in, Vixen. As I sat on Santa's lap, I went on to explain to Santa that I wanted the paw print from Rudolph and not an autograph because I knew that reindeers couldn't hold onto a pencil because they didn't have thumbs. Smart little guy. Santa chuckled at my request and told me reindeer were very busy pulling his sleigh, but he'd try his best to make sure I got Rudolph's paw print autograph. For the next several weeks, all I could seem to talk about was how much I hoped Santa would remember that I wanted Rudolph's paw print and that I hoped that Santa and the reindeer would have just enough time at our house to make it happen. It was the one thing I most wanted for Christmas. So fast forward to Christmas morning. My sister and I were awake before the sun came up, just staring into the tree and all of the packages that Santa had brought during the night. We were looking at the tags, seeing which gifts were ours, teasing each other who had the most or the biggest boxes, and generally just going a bit stir crazy, waiting for mom and dad to wake up so we could open our presents. And then I found it. On the biggest gift with my name on it, there was a greeting card envelope attached. I didn't bother waiting for my parents to wake up. I tore open the card. On the front was a nice framed picture of Rudolph from his Christmas special on TV. My excitement grew. I knew this was it. Santa had found enough time to get Rudolph's paw print for me. I opened the card and there was a note from Santa thanking me for being a good boy all year. He did warn me that he saw the time that I hid my sister's favorite Barbie and that one time I played with matches. But all of the good things that I had done throughout the year were enough to put me on the nice list, and he closed by saying that he hoped that I enjoyed all my new toys. He signed it, Love Santa. And then there was a PS. Turn over the card for a special surprise. I flipped over the card and there it was. Rudolph's paw print. I was a kid in love with the magic of Christmas time and the biggest Christmas wish that I could make had come true. I had Rudolph's autograph. I was elated. I can still remember how my heart swelled with joy that morning and how I knew that I would treasure this card for the rest of my life. It was truly the most magical Christmas of my entire life. But the story does not end there. We once again fast forward to a couple of days after Christmas and me doing one of my chores. It was my job to gather up all the garbage from the waste cans in the house and put them in a bin at the curb on garbage pickup day. As I emptied the waste basket next to my parents' bed, something caught my eye. I saw some bits of paper with what looked like Santa's handwriting on it. Each line was a bit different, almost like someone was practicing a different handwriting than they normally use. But the real shock came as I continued to look through this stack of paper. On the very final piece, I found several variations of Rudolph's paw print that 
I had on my card from Christmas morning. At first, I didn't quite understand. So I folded these pieces of paper and put them in my pocket. I took the rest of the garbage out to the bin, then snuck off to my bedroom to try to work out what I had discovered. Little by little, it began to dawn on me. The first version of the handwriting looked an awfully lot like my mom's, and it became more distinct with each line. And why were there so many versions of Rudolph's paw print? Was someone practicing to make it look convincing? Over the next few minutes, I worked it out. My mom had written the letter and she had drawn the paw print. But why? Why would she do that? Why wouldn't Santa write the letter himself? Why wouldn't he just get Rudolph's paw print for real? And then it happened. I had an epiphany that would forever alter how I experienced Christmas. At the young age of just six, maybe seven years old, the magic of Christmas shattered and I realized the truth. Santa isn't real. Sure, I spent the next several years playing along, pretending I still believed in Santa for my parents' sake. Even at that young age, I knew that if my mom and dad realized what I had found out and how I had come to know the truth, they would be heartbroken to have ruined the magic of Christmas for me. And that, my friends, is the story of how I stopped believing in Santa and how, as a very young child, lost that sense of awe and wonder at Christmas time. Merry Christmas! Say Merry Christmas, sexy. Merry Christmas. Happy Hanukkah. Happy Holidays. Sexy doesn't celebrate holidays, I guess. He's smelling my hair.